going to get in its cliff here from down under. Um, I'm just assembling up another batch of these Hallmark ITTP probes. I notice Tomac have a new version of Pathpilot with some more advanced probe features. So I thought I'd do a bit of a video outlining them. I've just installed the latest version of Pathpilot version 2.4.1. Um, the previous one I had on, and I've still got to change it on this machine, is version 2.1.4. And I see they've made some improvements to the probe facilities on the probe electronic tool setter setup page it was just on one page um, and it was a little bit confusing now they've got two separate pages one for the electronic tool setter and one for the probe and in addition to that they've increased the uh, some of the features and it is a more sophisticated uh, set of controls now. So I'll go over some of the improvements that they've made in this later version of Pathpilot. First off, just a very quick introduction to what a probe is and what it can do for those of you who are unfamiliar with a probe and you've just been using a Heimer or a Wobbler. You go to the control software probe page and for example if you want to find the center of a hole and set the work origin you don't have to manually touch it off on four of the curved inner surfaces. You can get the control software probing routine to do it automatically for you. Let's have a look here on this page. Here we have find center set work origin. You just press that button. So let's do that now. So we just jog the probe tip down into the hole somewhere near the middle and press the find center work set work origin button and now it has found the middle and set the DROs on the X and Y to 0, 0. You can also use the probe to set the Z in a similar process. Before you first use a probe you need to set the tip concentric and um, I recommend doing that with a sensitive finger dial indicator. There is the facility within Pathpilot to set it up using this the probing routine on the probe setup page, tip concentricity, and it's the same as the uh, earlier version of the software. I don't see any changes there. If you didn't have a light finger dial indicator, you could use that facility, but it will take longer. It's very quick to do it with a light finger indicator and adjust the three grub screws. This only needs to be done once when you first set up your probe. Um, if you're interested in the details of doing that, I've done a video on the subject called Probe Setup and Use on the uh, Thread Express YouTube channel or on the Hallmark ITTP website. If you're unfamiliar with the Hallmark ITTP, it's impact tolerant touch probe. It's a probe that is very tolerant of impact. You can be more relaxed when you're jogging around and you don't have to worry about breaking the stylus tip. It would take a massive crash to do that. It has a large degree of retraction. It also has a large de degree of retraction in the straight vertical Z movement as well. Another example would be if you want to set the machine spindle center line to the corner of a block, a very common job. If you're used to doing it with a Heimer or a Wobbler, here's how you do it with a probe. You jog to about that position there and then uh, go over to your probe page, uh, find corner, set work origin, and you can see there the graphics show the wrong corner. So you just change the corner until you get the corner that represents your situation and um, I'll just put the camera on a tripod now and show you that little probing routine to find the corner set the work origin okay so you just click on that button find corner set work origin and your X and Y 
DROs are set. Just a quick introduction to the probing routine so you can find the corner and set the work origin, you can find an inner corner, you can probe and find a face in the X, Y and Z and you can also set the work origin or find that X, Y or Z. You can, here it is here for the Z and on this page it allows you to find the center of a pocket or a gap uh, or go around the block and find the center of a block uh, or a circular block or in the A-axis situation it, it uh, coordinates with the rotary motion of the A-axis and sets up and finds the middle of a part in the A-axis. The big change probe related to this new version of Pathpilot version 2.4.1 is that they have taken seriously the need to understand and enter the effective tip diameter. The effective tip diameter, you don't just look at the tip of your probe and measure it and say, oh, that's four millimeters or five thirty second and enter that into the tool table, but they are now explaining that you need to work out what the effective tip diameter is and enter that into the tool table. And if we go to the offsets page, you can see here on page, on the, the offsets page number 99, mill probe, diameter is effective, not actual. And that's really brilliant. Um, I've been trying to get that across to people uh, for some time now, and it's really good to see Tormac have now got it in their software and have made it very easy to measure and set the effective tip diameter. The effective tip diameter is the actual diameter less two times the pre-travel and the pre-travel is a very tiny error but it's still significant in movement before the probe trips. If you want to know more about that I've done several YouTube videos of it. Uh, probably the easiest one is one called Probe Accuracy in the Hallmark ITT page. If you go to the probe page you'll see a video on probe accuracy also on the Thread Express YouTube channel and I'll explain about pre-travel, pre-travel variation and effective tip diameter. Another nice new feature of this latest version of Pathpilot is that you can set the probe feed rates. This is the rapid probe feed rate, the roughing probe feed rate and the fine probe feed rate. I've changed over to G20 in inches because most people will be in inches and I've set it at 100 for rapid, 30 for roughing and the fine accurate feed rate that actually does the final setting of the software at 1.5 inches. It's still quite fast um, but you can change those figures around as probably a upper limit within the software that you can't go beyond. A really great feature of this new version of the software is how it works out the effective tip diameter. I'll just take you through it in a minute, but in, in brief, you have a, a piece of precision bore, for example, a ring gauge or a bored diameter that you know exactly what that diameter is. For example, I've got a ring gauge which is 800 thou diameter, 0.8 of an inch. And it takes you through a probing routine on the X plus minus and Y plus minus. It moves and sets the effective tip diameter. And when you think about it, it can do that if it knows the diameter of the bore. It moves forwards and backwards and sideways and does the mathematics and works out what your effective tip diameter is, taking into account automatically what the pre-travel or the average pre-travel is and gives you the effective diameter so that when you go to your offsets and have a look here it won't be the tip diameter it will be the effective diameter. So you just run this little automatic probing routine in your board diameter I'll just show it physically in a minute and then it works out what the effective tip diameter is 1548 and if we go to offsets, it automatically loads it in there. You don't even have to do that, 0 0.1548. Okay, well, let's just run that little setting routine now. So uh, you'll notice it 
does a rough probe feed move in each direction and then a fine probe feed move to set the position. Move and set tip diameter. So there we are, that's uh, the, the routine involved there. Now we have loaded the effective tip diameter into the offsets tool number 99 tool diameter setting. That sort of sums it up in basic terms. Uh, if you'd like me to go into the details a bit more about some of the dis these discrepancies of a pre-travel variation and so on, I'll carry on with it now. If you don't have time for that, thanks for watching it so far. Well, while that's a very quick and a, a efficient way to set the effective tip diameter, it won't give you the most accurate setting. Um, and the problem is that the pre-travel varies between the front and the back and uh, X minus and X plus. Um, because of the tri-swing arm inside the probe, uh, you get a variation in pre-travel. Um, now that's very little on a on a stem, on a stylus stem like the Hallmark ITTP because it's a very stiff rigid stem with very little flex and very little pre-travel and a tiny amount of pre-travel variation but if you're setting up something like this probe which has a very thin flexible stylus stem the SPU40 uh, because of the pre because of the uh, tri-swing arm inside the probe you get more variation uh, in the pre-travel. That's called pre-travel variation. It's different from the left to the right, the front to the back. And that probing routine doesn't take that into account. As far as I can see, it does one routine to set the middle and then it does a left-right X minus X plus setting to set the effective diameter. But it doesn't take into account uh, the four different positions, uh, the four different pre-travels the full pre-travel variation and that's quite a lot you know you're talking uh, a reasonable amount of inaccuracy if you're using a flexible stem probe like the SPU40 it will be pretty close on a rigid stem like this and I would say for most practical workshop applications that way of setting the effective diameter will be good enough I'll just do a quick check to see how accurate it is using that method if I use this probing routine, find X plus and find X minus, I can get a pretty quick grip on it. If you're interested in this uh, subject, have a look at my videos. Um, I've done several videos delving deeply into this, but this is just a quick check. So if we run that probing routine, find X plus, take note of it, find X minus, turn at 90 degrees, do the same again the error is very small, it's less than half a thou with, with that probe with a more flexible stem probe the error will be a lot more than that um, but you know for a, a rigid stem probe that's not a bad way of setting the effective diameter it's certainly very quick and easy well, some of you might be thinking, well, if that setting routine doesn't set the exact effective diameter because there's still errors in there, why didn't Tormat come up with a better setting routine that took into account uh, all of the errors? Well, the problem is that's not really possible unless you have very sophisticated software that takes into account uh, those internal variables in different rotary positions. Um, it's, you know, something like a Renishaw probe set up with a high precision uh, vertical machining center uh, this costs thousands of dollars for the software and for the probe that's capable of compensating for those type of errors Pathpilot and Tormac doesn't have that sophistication it's a workshop a CNC machine and you can't work to tenths of a thou or microns if you're interested in this subject have a look at my video probe accuracy um, uh, if I remember I'll put some links 
uh, underneath in the description below this video. Another way to summarize this discrepancy error is that probes have swing arms at 120 degrees and CNC machines have slideways axes at 90 degrees and the only way you could compensate would be to have a different effective diameter for each direction of the axes plus minus x, y and so on. Um, and the high-end machines with high-end software and spindle orientation do have that facility but it would really be wasted on a machine like the Tormark that isn't capable of working to tenths of a thou anyway. You'd just be adding a lot of cost to the software for very little gain. Alright, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.